Hello everyone. Welcome back to our GIS classes. In the previous session, we were discussing on the types of data used in GIS and the characteristic features of those data. And today, let's look into which are the major sources from which the GIS will receive these data. As we already discussed that data is the major fuel for GIS. And we have two major types of data. One is a spatial data and the other one is an attribute data. A spatial data is that data that are referenced to a location on the surface of the earth. Whereas an attribute data is those data that supports the spatial data with additional information about the spatial data. There are various sources from which the GIS will receive these data. For a spatial data, we have two major sources. One is the in-situ data and the other one is the remote sensing data. Analog maps, field surveys and GPS are various forms of in-situ data. At the same time, digital maps, aerial photograph, satellite imageries and several open free web sources forms the data for the spatial data through remote sensing waves. Now let's look into detail about the analog map. Analog maps are those maps that are being obtained after digitizing with the help of scanners or digitizers. Such types of maps are available in the public domain and is an excellent form of information which can be used with suitable modifications based on our objective. The digitized hard copy historical maps and other data maps are examples of an analog map. Here is the point we discuss or compare an analog map with a digital map. An analog map is a rigid form of map where the message is conveyed by virtue of its signs and symbols. At the same time, a digital map are those maps which are created in a digital media. Analog maps are measurable in nature but it's not interactive. At the same time, maps in the digital form are highly interactive in nature based on its objective. The maps are always projected in an analog map, whereas a digital map can be represented both in a two-dimensional and in a three-dimensional format. Analog maps are difficult to integ integrate with other data, whereas it is very easy for a digital map to get interacted and integrated with other data. Field survey is another form or source of spatial data. The collection and gathering of information at a local level by conducting the primary survey is called a field survey. It is generally carried out through observations, sketching, measurement, etc. The field surveys are generally carried out by an organization when there will be a lack of availability of a proper data. Various methods are employed for a field survey. The traditional manual surveying methods use a chain, plane table, theodolite, alidate, etc. And these data are being transferred to a field book. At the same time, a modern technique like total station, DGPS, GPR store data in a digital format and are always ready for direct input into GIS. Now let's look into what is an aerial photography. The photographs that are taken from air with a camera axis pointing downward at the time of capturing is an aerial photo. These type of photographs are different from a normal photograph as it provides a three-dimensional view of the geographical feature it projects. The aerial photographs are highly useful for monitoring the change in environment and agricultural patterns. Informations on land use, vegetation type, 
moisture or the heat levels or any aspects of landscapes are available through an aerial photograph. For this, vertical photographs are most widely used in our GIS applications. The merits of the aerial photograph, according to Kura, include wider availability, lower cost, wide area synoptic views, time freezing ability, high spectral resolution as well as spatial resolution and a three-dimensional perspective view of the image. However, there is a demerit for the aerial photograph as they do not provide spatially referenced data and the user has to refer it with other spatial map and make it as a georeference or a spatial map. Satellite imagery or the apt observation imageries are images of the earth or other planets collected by the imaging satellites operated either by the government or the private agencies around the world. The satellite imaging companies sell these images by licensing them to the government or other agencies like our Google map or Apple map etc. The first image from the space were taken on October 24, 1946 by United States that launched V-2 missiles. The first satellite photography of the Earth image was made on August 14, 1959 by the United States Explorer 6. The satellite images have many applications in meteorology, oceanography, fishing, agriculture, biodiversity conservation, forest, geology, cartography and hence it is highly used as a GIS data. Today, high resolution satellite imageries are available with a ground resolution of 1 to 3 meter and can even produce 1 is to 25,000 topographical sheets. GPS or the Global Positioning System is a network of satellites that continuously transmit coded information which make it possible to precisely identify the location on the Earth by measuring the distance from the satellite. Thus, GPS is a major source of spatial data. It is a satellite-based navigation system developed for the military purpose by the United States Department of Defense. There are 24 GPS satellites orbiting the Earth at every two hours. The fundamental navigation principle of the GPS is based on the measurement between the user and the segments. The official name of GPS was given by the United States is Navigation Satellite for Timing and Ranging Global Positioning System or we simply call it as Navster GPS. The GPS is a 24-hour all-weather satellite system. Now let's look into some of the open free web sources available for spatial data. The Natural Earth data is supported by the North American Cartographic Information Society and is a global free data for public domain. You can find cultural, physical and raster data free of cost under this data source. The ISRI open data has almost 67,000 open data sheets and 4,092 organizations around the world associated with it. It is managed by the largest commercial GIS organization in the world. You will be available with spreadsheets, KMLs, shapefiles and other APLs with the A3 open data source. The USGIS that is the Geological Survey of the United States is provides another major data source. It generally provides the remote sensing data, especially the Landsat with the global data cover. 
to obtain highly detailed free GIS data, OpenStreetMap is a major source. They provide high spatial resolution cultural vector data free of cost. SEDAC is the social and economic data available for the spatial data. They retrieve the global socio-economic data from different themes like agriculture, climate, conservation, governance, health, hazards, infrastructure, land use, poverty, marine, coastal population, and many. Open topography is another form of an open web source, which is search available with the LIDAR data. 90% of the LIDAR data, especially for the countries here, United States, Canada, Australia, Brazil, etc. are available with the open topography. Bhuvan is an another source developed by ISRO and is launched on 12th August 2009 by the Government of India. Under the Bhuvan, both the two-dimensional and the three-dimensional representation of the Earth are available. It provides timely disaster support services, free satellite data and a products download facility with rich thematic data sets for the public. Naxi is another product of the Government of India launched by the Survey of India. It offers 3000 topographic maps or the open series maps in a PDF format of 1 is to 50,000 scale through Aadhaar enabled user authentication process. Thus, it is free of cost for the citizens of India. Now let's look into the sources of attribute data. There are various sources from which we can get the attribute data. The census data, the questionnaire survey, other hard copy maps other than the analog and the digital maps, GIS data from libraries, data from the national and international mapping agencies, elevation data, bathymetry data, geo-referenced images hard copy available with us, time series multispectral satellite images, satellite state and national agencies and detailed district and municipal data, and the reports and the publications of various organizations and magazines are the major sources of attribute data. Census and the survey data are the collection of related information. They may be either spatial in character or attribute in character. If each item in the collection has a spatial or geographical reference, we can consider the spatial data as census data as a spatial data. If it is not available, then we will consider it an attribute data. You can take the population census or agriculture census as an example of spatial census data. A census is the procedure of systematically acquiring and recording information about the members of a given population. The term is used mostly in connection with the national population and housing census. Population census normally have same elements of spatial referencing. These census describe the state of a whole nation, area by area. Questionnaire survey Questionnaire survey can be defined as a research method for collecting the data from a predefined group of respondents to gain information and insight on various topics of interest. It is the act of query to examine a condition or a situation or a spatial data to analyze its various aspects. Due to the non-availability of proper data, the organizations generally conduct a threat service. One advantage of such survey is that the agency that collects the data have a control over the way in which the data is collected. A college or an educational institution that lies in a spatially referenced location has a number of factors to be surveyed like the number of classrooms, the courses being taught, the number of students, 
use of various techniques and so on. Besides this, you can find the hard copy maps. The hard copy maps like topo sheets are geo-referenced images. In addition to it, you can find the district planning maps or the state maps that provide the best source of attribute data. The tourist map, trekking maps, antique maps are some of the examples of such type of attribute data map where the spatial referencing is not that much essential. I hope you have enjoyed today's session. Please post your doubts and queries in the comment box or in the Google Classroom. I wish everyone a great day ahead. Thank you.